In this video, I want to look at different ways we can display numerical data. In particular, I'm going to look at dot plots, histograms, stem and leaf plots, line graphs, and scatter plots. Let's start with a dot plot. A dot plot is a kind of pictograph in which the categories are numbers and the icons are dots or some other type of icon. The dots function mainly as tally marks. These are very easy to draw, and you can even draw dot plots as data is collected. Here's an example of a dot plot of the number of black eyed peas in a teaspoon. We have the number line, and we just have little dots to represent each data value. We had one teaspoon that had 16 black eyed peas, two that had 17, etc. If the range of data is too large, we can even group the data into intervals for the dot plot. So here we looked at the number of cities between 0 and 9, the number between 10 and 19, etc. So we didn't want to have an entire number line that went all the way from 0 to 79, so we went ahead and just grouped them. Next we have a histogram. The histogram is a kind of bar graph, but the categories are individual numbers or equal length intervals of numbers. Just like I can think of fusing the pictures in a pictograph to make a bar graph, we can think of fusing the dots in a dot plot to make a histogram. So this is a histogram to represent the same dot plot I had before. The x-axis can either be individual numbers or these groups of numbers, and this is going to be very, very similar to a bar graph. A stem and leaf plot, sometimes referred to as stem plots, can be used to quickly organize numerical data you are collecting. Stem and leaf plots are definitely the most useful for organizing two-digit data. Here's an example of a stem and leaf plot. The first column here is the stems. This is the first digit of my numbers. The second is the leaves. So the idea here is I have the number 7. I have 18 and 14, 22, 26, 20, 29, 30, 33, 30, 38, 31, 36, etc. Next, we have line graphs. A line graph is a graph in which adjacent data points are connected by a line. Here's an example of a line graph. We had individual points representing different years, and then we just kind of connect the dots. Line graphs are appropriate for displaying continuously varying data. So for example, data that varies over a time period. This is an example of an inappropriate use of a line graph. Line graphs are not appropriate for displaying data in categories that don't vary continuously. So for instance, in this case, we were looking at state populations. It doesn't make sense to use a line graph here because there's no logical reason to connect Georgia to Washington, Washington to Oregon, etc. So this would not be an appropriate use of a line graph. Finally, we have scatter plots. A scatter plot consists of a collection of data points that are plotted in a plane. As an example, this is the percent proficient in reading versus math in eighth grade in 2015. So the x-axis has their percentage proficiency in reading, the y-axis is in math, and then we have our each individual points. Scatter plots are very nice to see how two kinds of data are related. In particular, for this, we can see that students that have a higher proficiency in reading also have a higher proficiency in math. 